Right, hello everybody and welcome to the first part of our secondary section here and this is going to be about object-oriented programming. So at this point it is assumed that you at least have the basics to Python down and understood. So if you don't, you're definitely going to want to check out some sort of Python basics tutorial so you can get up to speed. Now in the next few videos we're going to give a brief crash course on the real basics of object-oriented programming since it's really not a topic that's covered always in basic programming tutorials. So especially Python because you can you can program Python without object-oriented programming and a lot of people do especially for like data analysis and stuff but you're going to find that almost all modules are going to incorporate object-oriented programming or OOP for short. So it's a good idea to just understand object-oriented programming so that you can work with these modules and just kind of know what to expect out of these modules and know what you can do and what you can't do with them. So first off, what actually is object-oriented programming? So object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm or really kind of better explained, it's a structure. So it's just plain the way that we structure our program and how the user might interact with them. So since Python's interpreted line by line, a lot of people will just write Python to be interpreted line by line. But what object-oriented programming is going to give your programs is a bit more of a dynamic nature. And it usually makes the most sense for anything that's going to be interacted with by someone. So this means things like application software or games and modules. These are generally going to be written in object-oriented programming since they are being interacted with. Now obviously application software and games are generally interacted with the end user whereas modules are being interacted with by a developer but the same holds true they're being interacted with so we need a high degree of dynamicness. Okay. So what's done with object-oriented programming is that the developer is going to create classes and then within these classes you have things that look like functions but they're called methods. So from there, anytime a class is invoked, it's going to create what's known as an object. It may also be referred to as an instance when it's created. But then, various features of the object can be modified through the methods that are also created within the class. Sometimes you can also inherit, or you can always inherit, but not always are people doing inheritance. But you can also create a class and inherit from another class. But we'll talk about that in a moment. So let's actually go ahead and create a class and show some basic interaction with it. So first, when we want to make any class, you have to define it first. And to define a class, you just type out class, and then we'll call ours program. Now, we have empty parentheses here, but if you wanted to do any sort of inheritance, this is where you would do it. So again, inheritance is a way that we can inherit from another class. So we can inherit the entire class of something else. And with it, when we inherit it, we get all of its methods. And so by doing that, we can actually customize the other class because we inherit from it and then we write our own methods on top of it. But for now, we're not going to deal with inheritance because that's more of an advanced topic and not really that necessary for us to understand. So again, mostly we're trying to do this so that we can understand how to interact with these modules. So the next thing that you're going to see, possibly but usually, will be the following. Someone will do define and then underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore and then not always but sometimes and most of the time you'll probably see at least self in here and then maybe args and then maybe quargs so what is all this so first of all you have the init method and this is actually our first look at a method and methods are just like functions we just happen to call them methods but they look act and are defined pretty much in the same way the init method is a special method though and this is a method that's always going to run every time we create an object out of a class. So this would be things like default settings in, a, in an application. You would put them in the init or the things that define the window and the, you know, the main menu bar or something. These are things that would go with in method. So you denote an init method with a double underscore. But the double underscore is used for a lot of other methods as well. So an example of another method, basically it's used for lack of a better term, fancy methods. So the init method uses the double underscores to denote its fanciness, whereas there's other ones. So let's quickly pass this method for now. But another example of a method would be like define underscore underscore sub underscore underscore. And what this would do is give our object 
the properties required to do subtraction. So Python isn't just going to know what type of data your object is unless you tell it to. And if you want it to be able to do subtraction, i.e. so you can literally use the subtraction sign, you have to define that method in there and how it should react when you do subtraction. Anyways, moving on. These are a little more advanced object-oriented programming, but I just wanted to make you aware of them. So now, within the method, let's create some basic properties. So first of all, for every program, you're always going to have, uh, let's say, you're always going to have the language that it is, so self.language or self.lang, we're going to say is equal to input, and this is just a way to get user input, equal to input, and then we ask a question like, you know, what language colon space and we use self.lang because this is we're modifying the object itself and I'll, later on I'll show you but when you define this when you call this and create an object out of program whatever you called that object will take the place of self so let's say you you know you said your object was p okay to reference the language you would say p.lang but I'll show you that in a moment anyways but that's why we use self there if you didn't want it to be referenced by the object, you could just say lang, and then you wouldn't really be able to as easily reference that. But anyway, we'll say self.lang. Then we're gonna do a self.version as a programming version or a program version. And again, this will be the float conversion of whatever the string input from the user was to this question, version. And then finally, we'll ask the user what their skill level is. We'll just have a nice three questions here. And that's going to be equal to the input of the question, what skill level? Okay, and that's basically it. So now we've got some, some nice questions here that we can now store based on our init method, which will always run, and I'll show you. So let's say p1 equals program, empty parameters. So let's run that now. And so the first question is, you know, what language? So we're using Python, so let's just say Python. Version, I'm using 3.4. And then what skill level? We'll say beginner. beginner. Okay, so we've defined that, and now we could call our P1 object. So we could say P1. Cool. We could also say something like this. We could say P1.lang. Okay, and so we can reference, okay, it, it's Python. We can also say P1.version. 3.4. So stuff like that, we can start referencing this, and later on I'll show you we can define more objects and stuff like that, and so you can have an unlimited amount of objects with the dynamic properties that we really only needed to use just a few lines this way, but if you were doing, say, functional programming or something in line, you'd have a much harder time controlling how many lines it was going to take and really making it as dynamic as possible. So anyways, that's just a really quick intro. We've got at least one more video on object-oriented programming. We'll create a few more methods, talk about updating and all of that. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.